Are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready, Cherry? Hello, everyone, and welcome. I, I get it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the With Chinese Characteristics podcast. I'm Natalie. I'm Cherry. And we talk about topics with Chinese characteristics. And this is our part two of our Ren Shikai expose, a uh, specialty <laughs> on the man, the myth, the legend, the general, the president, the emperor, the foreign commissioner, um, the poet, the scholar. <laughs> Ren Shikai. Might be a stretch for the last... He wrote poems. Some. Yeah. A man wears many hats. Uh, do you want to hear one of Ren Shikai's poems, Cherry? Sure. Okay. So this is in English. So it probably has lost some some je ne sais quoi from the original. We'll have to make do. Um, so this is called Fallen Flowers. The falling flowers dance outside the window and seem to be flying snowflakes. I call a young servant to clean the yard, but only find that the wind brings them to unknown places. Ah! What a master, Cherry. I feel like I could come this up with that sweet in and dainty. fourth grade or something. Uh, so, anyway. Mm. You sure he wrote it? Well, I mean, uh, I feel like you, it's, it's not, it's not that exciting of a poem to lie about having written. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, I want to I wanna issue a correction, actually, because last episode... I claimed sort of offhand. I was like, oh, Ren Shikai had like 30 concubines and like 50 children, which was unfair to Ren Shikai. Oh? Not that there was anything wrong in the eyes of Chinese society at the time to having a bunch of concubines. If anything, uh, you're a good man taking care of all these women. Well, the new party thought it was wrong, but... Yeah, well, <laughs> of course, Mao's not going to like it. Uh, so I mean, he and actually... The, and the KMT. And the KMT, right? On um, paper, at least. Yeah, listen to our episode. <laughs> on uh, concubines of the comrades. But uh, before he came back to rule the country, he had one wife, nine concubines, and 32 children. So, okay. You know, you know, I exaggerated it slightly. I mean, still a, still a significant still number. A so, uh, but, uh, yeah. Ren Shikai was a lover and a fighter. Yes. Um, this episode is Everyone Hates Ren Shikai. Now that he's reached the pinnacle, Cherry, yeah. he has been called from exile to be the president of the Republic of China. He's the only man, Cherry, who can save it. Mm. And now it kind of goes downhill. To know about everything that had happened before it went on down, down, before it went downhill, Yeah. listen to our last episode. How it went uphill for Ren Shikai. Yes. And that episode is called Everyone Loves Yuan Shikai. Yes. And you can find it, uh, you know, wherever, wherever you, you found, found this episode. Yeah. And I want to uh, say that at the end of this, Lording over all of this, hovering over it, is the fact that Ren Shikai is going to declare himself emperor at the end of this story. Yes. Um, and so I want you to think, Cherry, and I guess the audience, whether you think from the beginning this was Ren Shikai's whole plan. He's like, okay, I'll just be the president. I'll work my way in there. Mm. Then I can finally be emperor. Because, you know, Ren Shikai, his whole life, he's in his 50s. China's at an emperor. That's the top position. So it's a little late in the game for Ren Shikai to be being a president um or if you think ren shikai is just a tragically misunderstood you know <laughs> national hero seems to be what you're saying and he just but... thought that this is what's the best for the country mm, okay okay so why don't you why don't you think about why don't you think about that cherry so and it's important to to note that wh whatever person became charged of the president of china mm -hmm. it's not going to be an easy job right mm. china has a lot of problems it's huge yeah. Um, it's not economically modern at this time. It's got lots of foreigners who want to bite off pieces of it. Who has already. Right. The, the British are in Tibet. Mm -hmm. The Russians are in uh, outer Mongolia. Mongolia. The Japanese are coming into Manchuria. So there's a lot going on. This is right after the hundred years of shame. This is still ongoing. Still I'd ongoing, say the hundred, yeah. hundred years of shame. Yeah. Um, I think the Hundred Years of Shame officially starts with the first Opium War in 1840. Mm. And then, you know, so this is where we still got another 30 years of shame to go, Cherry. You know when the shame ended? <laughs> 1949. Mm, yeah, it's the <laughs> party line. Yes. People's Republic of China. Yes. Um, peoples. The peoples, Cherry. Uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be a rough job regardless. So, Ren Shikai left last episode. Hmm. There's a civil war, revolution. Ren Shikai was the general that the Qing Empire had put in charge. Sun Yat-sen and the nationalists in Nanjing decided to negotiate. Okay. Ren Shikai got the, uh, really the em empress regent, right? The, the mother of the emperor 
who was like six, to resign, and he became the president. Mm. Now, there's three, three things that the new Chinese Republic basically made, made Ren Shikai promise to. Okay. Which was the new capital is going to be Nanjing, whereas in Beijing before, Beijing is to the north. Beijing is the capital. So the, the capital of China throughout the centuries, the millennia, shifts between usually a few cities. I think probably the top three are Beijing, mm-hmm. northern capital, yeah. Nanjing, southern capital, Chongqing. Xi'an. Chongqing. Oh, Xi'an. Is that one too? Yeah, where the, where the um, terracotta oh, warriors, warriors are. are at. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, but there's, you know, there's a but couple. But Beijing is his power base. Yeah. Beijing and the current is, capital is, of the is, Qing dynasty. Is his power base. Yeah. And um, Nanjing is far away from home. Far away from home. So Beijing is where the Qing empire of the last 300 or so years mm. that was situated. And it's where Ren Shikai feels most familiar. It's where all his armies are. Uh, Nanjing is where Sun Yat-sen has more power in the south. And where the National Party's base is. Where the National Party's base is. So Ren Shikai, the deal is, new capital is going to be Nanjing. Ren Shikai has to come to Nanjing to be the president. And Ren Shikai is going to respect the provisional constitution. Because at the moment, the actual constitution hasn't been written yet. There's a provisional document. There's a provisional assembly. And... What Ren Shikai is supposed to be shepherding over as the George Washington of China mm. is we're going to elect representatives, we're going to write a constitution, yeah. and then we're going to form a new government. Well, Ren Shikai doesn't want to go to Nanjing, right? Because he doesn't <laughs> trust these people. And no. when they try and bring him to Nanjing, his troops revolt, probably on the orders of his son, uh, Ren Keding, who we'll talk about later, but he's mm. the oldest son. Um, and he's like, sorry, guys, I can't go down there. The Japanese are here, the Russians, my troops, they don't want me to leave. Sorry. <laughs> As if he can just, he's, he's so powerful, he can't just, yeah. he can't just do whatever he wants. Yes. But those he's are like, excuses. It's all my fault. He blames yeah. it on himself. He's yeah. like, don't blame the soldiers. They Aww. just love me too much. <laughs> um, and the, the, you know, the Nanjing Assembly, this provisional government, they yeah. don't want to start another war, right? So they're like, okay, fine. Okay, we trust you. You know, you know, we'll we'll do the election, we'll form the government, then we'll come up to you. Mm. Um, so that's all good. There's a lot of other there's a lot of problems for Ren Shikai at this point. Okay. The first is he doesn't believe in political parties, which is a problem if you're trying to run a government. Now, what's the extra problem? A democratic government. Well, a democratic government. So I mean, so the United States, yeah. the you know, the oldest I guess the most longest running modern Republic, right? There's been like the Roman, the Swiss, but you know, I mean, it's, it's the longest running modern one. Hmm. And early on the founding fathers, most of them, they didn't like political parties either. Cause they right. thought, well, you know, everybody just shows up to vote. They hmm. hear the arguments, they make a decision, right? Why do you need a political party? Mm-hmm. But it turns out the world doesn't work that way. Right. Mm-hmm. People want to band together and form alliances and they trade and they, Fight they for go, a common cause and yeah they go okay well i'll another. vote for you on this and you vote for me on that yeah. right and then yeah. you know they get they get parties together but ren shikai thought he was above all that but but at the the difference between china and america at this time is china already did have a majority party which is the kmt which is the people who did the revolution exactly right? yeah, yeah so obviously so him not believing it is a problem yes because they're yeah. going to be the ones to control yeah this legislature well they well, they're trying to well, be the ones. Well, yeah. they will, right? Yeah. Well, we'll get, but they're they're going to. And yeah. the other thing is that um, the way that the Constitution is written is kind of like a fusion between quite a few different republics. Okay. And like, um, let's say, England, mm-hmm. the parliament has sort of like a prime minister. It's called the premier, a right. prime minister type person. Okay. Who, you know, a prime minister has a lot of power. Yeah. And so Ren Shikai is still the president, mm. but the nationalists are going to get control of this Congress and they're going to have a powerful premier. Mm -hmm. So Ren Shikai, it seems just goes like, well, then I just have to be stronger than the Congress, right? The Congress is is my enemy, right? Because I'm not going to get political parties involved. He has lots of political support. He has this sort of political thing called the, the Bayang clique, which is formed up of his generals and, and people who support him, but he doesn't get them involved in the Congress. So on the one hand, Ren Shikai's got his, he's keeping his eye on this Congress, this, this parliament. Mm. But there's other problems too. Okay. Because one of the things that happened, so Sun Yat-sen, Sun Yat-sen, everybody's favorite guy, 
We talked about him in a previous episode. He just wants China to have a free republic, right? Yeah. But not everybody is as pure as Sun Yat-sen. <laughs> and there's lots of people who are like, oh, yeah, there's a revolution. And they took over their local government. And they're like, yeah, the republic, the republic's great. But like, they're not actually in any way linked to the republic uh. of China. And this, this kind of gets a little bit into taking Tiger Mountain by strategy, where mm. there's this bandit warlord. The vulture, yeah, who's like, oh, I'll take control of this region, so, and and uh, I'll just Shek Shek will the... put me in charge of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And lots of people did that all over China, right? If you have troops, you have guns, you take over your local area, you 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 say you're with the people with the new government, but you really don't have any allegiance. Mm. So so Renchikai's not stupid, and he's realized, okay, I got two big problems. I got to take control of all these local regions that mm -hmm. are kind of doing their own thing. Yeah. And I got to take control of this Congress. parliament, parliament this Congress. Yeah. So first he um, basically disbands all of the troops that fought for Sun Yat-sen's government. He's like... Their he, troops. Well, yeah, I guess, his they're his, I guess they're their troops now because he's the president. But he's like, thanks, guys, but we're good. You know, go home. <laughs> you know, have fun. Okay. And the KMT really... And, they, you know, they're not actually called the KMT yet. I think they're still yeah. called the Revolutionary Party. But yeah. they're like, they couldn't really do anything about it because they don't have any money. Mm. So they're like, okay, yeah, sure, right? You know, whatever. Sure thing, Renshikai. We trust you. <laughs> um, he also gets a huge loan okay. from a combination of Britain, France, Japan, Russia. Foreign loans. And uh, Germany. Okay. And the United States was like, this is a terrible loan. It's on record, the U.S. president who said that the terms were so harsh as to be immoral. Mm. Like, you guys are just taking advantage of China. Yeah. So the U.S. didn't get involved. The I loan, mean, what's new? I know, right? The loan was deeply unpopular. Yeah. The nationalists, the Revolution Party, Sonia Sun's party, did not like it. Mm. And Ren Shikai basically spent all of it raising more troops for himself <laughs> and buying guns for them. Right. Um, he also did things to try and cut down on local independence. He made it so he said that you can't, get a loan from a foreign power without the approval of the central government. Well, only, only I can. <laughs> only he can. Yeah. Uh, and in some cases, he would just invite generals who had kind of done their own thing to the capital and then just execute them. Oh, my. Which is only a trick that only works a couple times. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't have the Red Wedding yes. more than once. Yeah. You so That's very medieval. It is. You know, so he's trying to get control militarily. Mm. So now he's thinking like, okay, now I got to get control of the parliament, Ren Shikai. Because, not because he's power hungry, Cherry, just because he loves China this much. <laughs> yes. So. I'm sure that's why. The, they passed the rules for the permanent assembly. Okay. And it's going to have like 600 people in it or something. And, you know, so there's only 40 people at the start. And, he, right. you know, and they're Sun Yat-sen's buddies. They pass the rules. They get a bunch of, they, uh. Do the full elections. Mm -hmm. The KMT party, who is now the official name, the Guomindong mm -hmm. of the, of used to be the Revolutionary Party. They won, obviously. They won, you know, over 50% of the seats. Yes. Because they're the ones who did the revolution. They're, they're the, the ones who made the, arranged the whole thing. Yeah, they're the most organized. So yeah, so now they're in control. Ren Shikai seemed to take this as one might take news of a peasant uprising. <laughs> uh, a legislative body was fine so yeah. long as it existed to turn his ideas and policies into laws. Mm. A legislative body in the grip of a powerful radical party like the KMT was a threat. It needed to be crushed. Part of the reason for the struggle was, yeah, the Constitution didn't wasn't really clear where the difference between like the premier and the president was. And there was kind of some art about who's actually in power. You can't have two tigers and no. one mountain. <laughs> exactly, Cherry. Um, is, it, is that it? I just I didn't make that up. It's a Chinese saying. Yeah, well, sounds good. <laughs> okay, I believe it. This town's not big enough for the two of us, is the Old West saying. Uh, okay. Uh, encouraged by their victory and young and led by the young and charismatic Song Jiaren, the mm. nationalists looked to a bright future. As premier, he would be a firm check to Ren's power, and the unified assembly would likely become the most powerful branch of government. Mm. Soon after the election, though, Song was assassinated. This is the guy who's going to be the premier of the KMT. Yeah. At a Shanghai rail station and died soon after. The assassin was found to be tentatively linked to Ren's government. It's like yeah. he knew a guy who was cousins. With, you know what I mean? But like they're they're like, okay, this is involved. With the I North. think it was never confirmed. But yeah. it was one of the examples I've learned. Of, of his treachery. Of, of his treachery. Yeah. Yeah. So China triumphantly has its first elections. Yeah. 
in history. Yeah. Right. Not saying they're necessarily fair. Right. I mean, who knows exactly how it all played out in every little region, but it's a start. And then the guy who wins gets assassinated, yeah. essentially. And everyone's like, no, no, this is a republic now. We don't we don't just assassinate people yes. anymore. Well, I guess we still do. Sun Yat-sen demanded Ren Shikai step down immediately. Hmm. And prior to this, the two had actually gotten along. Sun Yat-sen had gone to Beijing. They hung out. They talked. They met like 30 times or however many times. Hmm. And they talked and talked and talked. And, and uh, Ren Shikai's like, yeah, republics are great. I love republics. <laughs> um, but then obviously this guy dies. Yeah. And Sun Yat-sen's like, Ren Shikai, you have to step down. Hmm. You're, even if you didn't do it, you're too biased to be this president, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. and we need somebody else to do this investigation. And Ren's like, nah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I guess an independent uh, investigator <laughs> right. is, was not a thing yet in no. this political structure. And um, Ren Shikai's like, no, we got to do an investigation. We'll see what happens. And, and I will lead it. I will lead it, right? The government <laughs> will lead it, right? Yeah. Well, he I'm is Ren the Shikai. government. You can trust me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so Sun Yat-sen calls for a second revolution. Oh, my. Predictably. Yeah. Ren Shikai then attempted to dismiss three nationalist KMT-aligned governors of provinces. Mm. And when I say governor, at this point, despite the efforts of Ren Shikai, Mm -hmm. governor in general is almost synonymous. If you were a Mm -hmm. governor of a province, you were the person with a military strong enough to keep control of that province. You're like a little little local warlord. You're like a little warlord almost already. So really, when he's dismissing them, he's kind of like, it's almost like a military move. Yeah. So he's like, uh, you guys need to get dismissed. Jiangxi, Jiangsu, Anhui, Shanghai, Guangdong, Fujian, Hunan, and Chongqing all declared independence. Well, that's... That's, that's some big ones, right? That's, that's some big, yeah, that's the, <laughs> basically almost all of China at that point. Yeah. yeah. So that's a lot of the good provinces, right? <laughs> yeah. And so... Um, With fertile lands and Ren, yeah. huge populations. Huge populations. So Ren Shikai had seemingly hoped for a peaceful resol- resolution. Yeah. He had invited Sun Yat-sen, Huang Xing, who was the, basically the second in command of the revolution, mm-hmm. um, to Beijing to chat. But once the governors and people started rebelling, he's like, I'm going to crush it. He said, Sun Yat-sen and Huang Xing have no real ability besides causing disturbances and bringing trouble. Wow. <laughs> They are good at They're that. They're revolutionaries. <laughs> yeah. That's sort of the definition of it. If you're not good at that, you're not a very good revolutionary. <laughs> yeah. But, but but he thinks he's the government. Like he thinks well, compared to them. Strictly, he's he the is one the who government. does. He is the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. He's the he's a president. But Ren Shikai was ready for this. Okay. He had lots of foreign money to arm his troops. He had demobilized all their <laughs> troops. And he had an overwhelming advantage. Another thing was that almost it's like it's almost like he knew yeah. he was going to betray interesting, them. That's interesting, Jerry. That's, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. That uh, maybe he knew this was going to happen. <laughs> um, another issue was, though, that he is more popular than the Qing. You know, like people blamed all of the problems of China for the last hundred years. On the Qing dynasty. On the Manchus, who was the ethnicity right. of the Qing dynasty. They're not of Han Qing. Chinese, so it's also yeah. easier to blame them. Yeah. So people thought like, well, let's give this Ren Shikai guy a chance. Maybe he's right. And several and Shikai, by comparison is of Han race. He's Han and he's, yeah. you know, he hasn't been in charge before. Yeah. And uh, several of the political parties like the uh, I think it's the ones, the Constitutionalist Party, one's the legalist part, but like kind of more conservative parties because the, the nationalists, the KMT, they have some things they believe that aren't that great to everyone. Like they believe in land reform. They believe mm. in um, like gender equality. <laughs> They believe in some stuff that the rest of China is like, whoa, that's a little much, right? Like, right. Can so be they're re- going to meet some resistance. And s- given that they're trying to go for a democracy, yes. it's going to have opposition. It's going to have opposition. Not everybody backs him this time, right? Because everybody was ready to overthrow the Qing, but not everyone's ready to throw overthrow Ren Shikai. Yeah. By September 1913, he had retaken Nanjing, Ren Shikai. Mm. Uh, Sun Yat-sen was forced to flee again oh, God. to Japan. And the story of his life. After this, Ren Shikai struck at the Nationalist Party. Yeah. And within a, within the year of starting the republic, or roughly a year, any realistic hope of an actual representative government was dead. Mm. Um, many nationalists, inc- especially any that had been involved in the uprising, were imprisoned and executed. So uh, now I'm going to just talk about. So we're going to talk about what the, some more some bad stuff Ren Shikai does after this. Oh, okay. I was like. But that I wasn't wanna... that wasn't the bad stuff yet. No, that's not the bad stuff. That's like <laughs> not the real bad stuff. That's not the real bad stuff. Okay. 
So I want to talk about some good stuff that Renjikai does during his presence to keep in the back good of stuff. your mind. Okay. Of like, this is the stuff that he's trying to do, right? So he's not trying to like, you know, become president so he can put a bunch of people in a camp and kill them, right? He, he has, on paper, good ideas. Okay. So, for example, he wanted, uh, when he became president, he gave amnesty for all prisoners that were not murderers or bandits. Because he's like, Ching, justice, very unfair. So unless you're a murderer or a bandit, you're free. Also, you're going to thank me. You're going to thank me. your life. He did tax relief. be loyal to me. Exactly. He did tax relief for farmers. He did Mm. equal uh, legal status for all ethnic groups. So like no retaliation against the Manchus, Mm. Mongols. Uh, Racist texts are forbidden. You can't have uh, racist publications like decrying to like kill a certain ethnic group. Okay. Other than that, though, there was free speech. Um, He kept- Was there? Yeah, you know, he had free speech. Okay. So as long as you didn't support the KMT. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Limited free speech. But mostly free speech. And uh, he kept the Mongols from seceding for the most part because the Mongols were like, we had a deal with the Manchu (laughs) Emperor. Yeah, they did. Right? (laughs) We don't have a deal with the Han Chinese, right? Yeah. Like, we come in and conquer you half the time, right? Yeah. Like, we don't, you know. Yeah. And, and Ranji Kai's like, no, no, come on, guys. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we're buds. Come on, guys. <laughs> Remember all the good times we had together. Yeah. And um, essentially, they stayed in. But, like, okay. not fully. Like, you know, they didn't have full power over them. Okay. But they stayed in. Otherwise, they were, they were going to get taken by Russia. Because Russia okay. was coming in from the north. Gotcha. Um, he opposed secret societies. He wow. um, attempted. Is that a good thing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because they're the ones always assassinating people. It's always these secret societies running around assassinating people, throwing bombs and stuff. So well, he assassinated someone. Uh, no, with Cherry. Cherry, please. So as long as he's doing the assassination. Yeah, that's not that's proven. Okay. okay? <laughs> yeah. Innocent until proven I'm guilty. I'm sensing some Yuan Shikai apologist. Yeah, no, no, what talking here. about. Um, so because he's like, you know, you know, if people believe something, it should be in the open, right? We don't like these secret societies. He's like, it's not good. So he attempted but failed to separate civilian and military leaders mm. to keep the military loyal to himself, himself. Right. But also and then the, the civilian government to just be administrative. Sure. He adopted the Western calendar and he's the one who calculated all. Well, not pin personally, but his government is the one that calculated the Western dates for all the Chinese holidays. Mm. So that comes from him. Uh, he started a new holiday, October 10th. National Day to commemorate the Wu Chang Uprising. Still celebrated today in Taiwan. It's Taiwanese National Day. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. New civil service exam based on the Western ones. Increased <laughs> education and built schools. Yes. Declared all religions are tolerated and equal under the law. Mm. Christians loved him. Uh, they even loved him seemingly more than Sun Yat-sen. Because Sun Yat-sen talked a big game, but he never got this stuff done. And, and mm. Ren Shikai... From the boxer above. But Samson is a Christian. I know, but you know, Cherry, hey, if he's a heathen, but he keeps missionaries from getting killed, then, you know, he's a good guy. So the Christians loved him. Mm, that's not what, what they said about Utrecht Ragnarsson. I know, but you know, Cherry, the world is the <laughs> lot last kingdom. I, I've been, I mean, to the last kingdom recently. <laughs> Just everyone, if I speak. If you speak Yeah, about, it's, it's really good. He uh, encouraged diversifying away from farming mm-hmm. into factories and manufacturing, okay. which led to an economic boom over the next 20 years. All right. Uh, fought opium addiction, both locally with the stuff that Chinese emperors always did. Well, he's not an emperor yet, but like, you know, where you just kill people. Yeah. But also he, because he's a diplomat, Cherry, he negotiated with foreign countries he and is. he finally yeah. got them to tone down the opium selling to China. Mm. He cut it off Toned at the source. Down. Well, I'm sure some people still did it, but okay. he dealt with England. He dealt with these people. He's like, come on, guys. It's the 20th century. So okay? they officially didn't like they, they didn't like. No, uh, they, no. There was like some anti-opium treaty signed with the UK. There's okay. other things. OK. Uh, he tried to recruit Theodore Roosevelt as a foreign advisor. <laughs> Theodore Roosevelt, famous because he won the Nobel Peace Prize for yeah. negotiating an end to the Russo-Japanese War. Mm hmm. Very widely respected international statesman after he was president. Yeah. Uh, but Theodore Roosevelt said no. Mm. What could have been, Cherry? What could have been? They both have such great mustaches. The fate of- <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Them they together? do both. Have- they could be buddies. Yeah, yeah. they could be buddies. Uh, he encouraged skilled people to engage in private commerce and industry as well as government. Okay. He's like, people need to just stop viewing the government and the civil service as the only ticket out. Like, people yeah. should have factories and they should do stuff. Let me guess why. Because he didn't. That wasn't his way I out. know, right? He's yeah. like, you know. Just like how he... Uh, got rid of the Confucian exams. Yes. It's actually kind of funny because there's two 
biographies in English about Ren Shikai, and both of them comment on like later he does some Confucius stuff and they're like Ren Shikai really didn't understand what Confucius meant which maybe is why he never <laughs> passed the exam um, <laughs> it wasn't the exam's fault it was the exam's it was just, fault he didn't, he didn't get it he reformed the money system with the Ren Shikai silver dollar which has his face oh on it oh my god yeah it's very famous there's lots of them still around yeah um, he helped found China's first aviation school hmm. which trained China's first pilots so you know so, so these are so positive he, things or, or his government yeah. has been busy. They this will was be a busy. lot of things, and he wasn't... This is like it wasn't within a, a three-year period. Yeah, it was a very short amount of time. Yeah, so yeah. he, you know, so he's trying to do stuff. Okay. So, and these things mm -hmm. were popular overall. I'm sure. Right? So, okay. So after crushing Sun Yat-sen, the nationalist government, Ren Shikai was not subtle about his maneuvers to take power. First, he had to become the actual president. He's still technically only the provisional president. Right, right. Um... So pro Renshikai crowds surrounded what was left of the Congress as they voted for who was going to be president because the Nationalist Party surrounded. Was, yeah, like surrounded, like the building, like a mob surrounded, oh. like, like January 6th. Yeah, Sherry. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. And they're like, Renshikai <laughs> should be president. Renshikai yeah. should be president, right? Okay. The Nationalist Party, KMT, still was not outlawed at this point. It's just that if you were on record for supporting the revolution and you did not denounce Sun Yat-sen, mm. you're might have a bullet in the back of your head or be mm -hmm. in a prison. Okay. He, they had to do three votes to vote for president. The crowds would not let them leave until they picked the president. Mm. And after three votes, they eventually voted for Ren Shikai. What a surprise. Right, a surprise. But So these mobs yes. were more successful than the J January 6th. Yes, they were very successful. Yeah. Okay. Um, but despite all that, it took three votes. Right. So there were clearly some people in there who are like... Wait, so I don't... Uh, they voted the first time. It wasn't Yuan Shikai. Yeah. They voted well, the second time. Well, they time. didn't have... Nobody got a majority. Oh, okay. Okay. Because, you know... They're like, we'll, we'll just try again. Somebody has until... to get 50%. Right. It's so like, they compromise. So you have to keep doing elections until somebody wins. Mm. And, uh, you know, eventually they're like, okay, well, we got to pick Ren Shikai. They're, they're going to kill us. So... Yeah. But, you know, they had to do it three times. So this right. was not, as of yet, a rubber stamp organization. Okay. Now Ren Shikai took his presidential official oath mm -hmm. in the Imperial Palace, wearing his military uniform... And afterwards, he received guests seated on the imperial throne. Oh, my. This is just normal stuff, Cherry. This is just normal. There are a few things, <laughs> not just one, that I can, yeah. that we can uh, These are just normal, here. just explainable. I thought he wanted a civilian government. Yeah, But he Cherry. wore his uniform. Cherry, but it's just a chair, okay? <laughs> it's just a nice room, right? Yeah, He's and he was on the throne. He was expect respecting Chinese history. Okay. So... If now, you say so. Yeah. What happens next? Well, so the nationalists <laughs> still held a majority in Congress, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Though the ones remaining denied any involvement with the revolution, probably because it failed, and the second revolution. Right. So, but they didn't go along with Ren's plans because, like I discussed, he didn't believe in political parties. Mm. So, like, they're going to think of their own stuff. Yeah. Right? They're not, he doesn't necessarily have a bunch of people in Congress to do what he wants. Right. So... so but it's, but it's yeah. just like you said, though. It's not that he couldn't no, be just, part of the to. political system. Yeah. He didn't want to. He, either, he could have if he wanted to. Yeah, he had the Bay and Clique. He prob I mean, he could have just joined the Nationalist Party, right? I mean, he could have done a lot of things. Well, but, but, he then, just, but then he would have to work with his arch enemies. Yeah. Uh, Sen Yat-san. Well, maybe not arch enemy. Yet. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think... What, he, wait, he outlawed him. Yeah, true. I guess, yeah, so I he, guess he... flee to Japan. Well, they were friends for like a year, right? When he was the president. Mm -hmm. But, and I think what this comes down to is, is I really think that Ren Shikai, to do some armchair psychology of a, a man who's been dead, um, you know, a hundred years, mm. is he believed that what China needed is stability and order. And that when you don't have stability and order, common Sounds people like he, suffer. Sounds like he understood Confucius very well. Yeah, right. Well, that's true, right? Common people suffer. Foreigners can come and take advantage. Mm -hmm. So to him arguing in like a congress and, and that kind of debate that was a weakness mm, right okay behind closed doors it's fine right but like you know it needed to be the government needed to be one voice so politics can't be done out in the open no right Got i it. mean i think president xi jinping probably could agree Much with that like too. today yeah yeah so he's like you know what screw this all nationalist representatives are expelled from the legislature oh my which is he could just do that I guess so, right? Mm. So he's like, which is more than half of yeah. the of the people, right? Because mm -hmm. they had a majority. All nationalist organizations are disbanded, and the nationalist party is outlawed. 
And then he's like, well, we only have less than half of a Congress. So I guess we got to disband the Congress too. <laughs> How convenient the for him. Right? Yeah. He gave each member $400 and sent them home. He's like, thanks. And he threw some money at them. And he's like, now get out. <laughs> so I don't know if the Nationalists got the $400. Maybe they did it. <laughs> well, the remaining members wouldn't be the Nationalists. Yeah. Then he suspended all provincial assemblies. So all like local government. Okay. And he's like, we're going to have a new Congress once things calm down. There never was a new Congress, a new parliament. Yeah. So he instead created a puppet advisory body, which wrote a new constitution that gave the president all the power. <laughs> it had some checks. Okay. For example, the president could be impeached by three-fourths of the legislature. Okay. But the president could also just disband the legislature whenever he wanted. Yeah. So I guess if they're doing an impeachment vote, you just disband them. <laughs> yeah. Also, the presidency became a 10-year term with as many re-elections as you wanted. But the president could extend their term if they felt like they needed to. It's a personal so decision. Could, it's a personal decision. <laughs> personal decision. I feel like staying for another 10 <laughs> yeah. years. Yeah, well, I don't think time's right for an election. Yeah. And also, when you have the election, tell me if this sounds familiar, Cherry, there could only be three candidates, all chosen by Ren Shikai, or the current <laughs> president, okay, inscribed on a gold plate, kept in a gold box with three gold keys by the three different like government officials. And people at the time assumed the names were Three of Ren Shikai's sons. <laughs> yeah. But apparently that's how they used to determine the imperial successor. Is you have mm. a gold box with the name of the person who's supposed to succeed the emperor when they die. And like So the, it's not he's not trying to make a new China. No, Cherry, come on. This is reasonable stuff. Oh, okay. This is just reasonable it's a republic with Chinese characteristics. <laughs> so uh still, outside of the government, uh -huh. his rule was relatively liberal, as we'll see. Okay. There was free press, economic liberalism. Again, free press, unless it's your for the KMT or against him. Little details, Jerry, details. Okay. Um, also, freedom of religion, freedom of, um, uh, you know, ethnic freedom, you know, like different, no rules about Ethnic free. Rules. You're free to be ethnic. Well, I mean, there was, you know, there's obviously. Yeah, equality among. Amongst... Yeah, equality among the yeah. different, the 51 flowers. Or 52 yeah. flowers. 56. 56 flowers. How many flowers are? We're, we're 50, yeah, for, for reference. Uh, in, Each new, ethnic in New group China, is in New China, we have a, you know, we call the all the ethnicities fifty a uh, flower. We're all yeah. we're fifty six flowers in a big garden, happily ever after. A couple of those flowers are in little pots, right under now. guard, you yeah. know, wilting. Um, uh, so still, as much as he consolidated power in his province, the his control over the provinces became more tenuous. Mm. Um, Tibet was backed by the UK and kind of barely kept in control. I already mentioned Mongolia. And uh, Manchuria, or uh, Mongolia. Yeah, I mentioned Mongolia. However, the greatest struggle of Ren's presidency, and perhaps his most, the second most infamous thing, was Japan's 21 demands. Mm. These demands were presented to China with no provocation, while the rest of the world was occupied with World War I. Mm -hmm. So previously, there was some spark that would cause these international incidents, like the Opium War, whatever, where... Yeah. Western powers or Japan would have an excuse. They'd be like, we're doing it because of this, right? Even yeah. if in the end it's BS. China has lost the war. China has killed some China foreign, didn't, foreign didn't uh, em, you know, uh, diplomats or whatever. Whatever yeah. it is, right? Yeah. So this time, Japan just plops they're over just the table. They're just doing it because they can. And they're like, yeah, you know what? Just It sucks to be you. <laughs> exactly. They encompass five main sections. So 1914, mm -hmm. World War One has started, mm -hmm. right? Um. Japan would get all German possessions in China. This was kind of a deal that they had with the Allies. Mm. And um, now China has to accept it too. Because Germany had like Qingdao famously, Qingdao beer. Yeah. Um, so they're like, we get all Germany stuff. Yeah. Japan would receive privileges. And this is kind of, but you know, like there's certain, you know, you get to station an army, you get to do things, right? In Inner Mongolia and Manchuria. Mm. Japan would gain joint ownership of the Hanye Ping Company, China's largest steelworks. Mm. So this is China's like industrial giant. China's like, you know, I don't know, General Motors or U.S. Steel. Right. No island or coastal area can be ceded or leased to a foreign power besides Japan. China will hire Japanese political, financial, military, and administrative advisors to help run the country. This would reduce... That all sounds perfectly yeah, fair. Right? I don't know what you're talking about. But see, the funny thing is when I'm talking to, when I'm talking to Cherry... When we're doing this, you're talking to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm talking to the audience right now. <laughs> yeah, okay. is you know, Cherry is a modern, worldly person, 
But when I oh, talk about, you. but when I mention stuff that Japan has done to China, <laughs> it's like that little <laughs> middle school cherry who learned about all these things in her history, but comes out. Yeah. I could see it in her face. She's like, <laughs> it's, be, it's being uh, carved into me. <laughs> yes. Yes. The past national humiliation. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I did have to learn about the 21 um, demands. demands in school. And one of those. One of those humiliating treaties mm-hmm. um, or agreements and I'm not that saying we, we shall all remember. It the... is very humiliating, right? Yes, yes. So Ren Shikai said, our country would no longer be a country and our people would be slaves. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and these are terms like worse than France and the United Kingdom put on Germany after mm-hmm. losing World War I. Yeah. Ren Shikai had some ideas, though, on how mm-hmm. to weasel out of this document. Mm-hmm. First, he appointed a new foreign minister who talked really slowly. <laughs> and and like drinking tea at meetings. <laughs> so he's like, okay, this guy hold he'll, he'll want to drink tea for a couple hours before the meeting, and then they won't they won't have much time. We're to gonna talk. exhaust them. We're gonna exhaust them. We'll, <laughs> still, we'll give us time to think, right? Yeah. You can read it really slowly, so that'll buy me some time. I mean, he can just have someone pretend to talk yeah. really slowly. But you it know, it doesn't have to be. But this guy was known for. It. Sure. This is a specialist. <laughs> okay. So, at being slow. At being slow with diplomacy. So he also leaked the plans to the media, causing national and international outrage. Mm, because we have a media now. Yeah, you have a meeting, free press. Yeah. And Chinese people, obviously, did not like these 21 demands, right? No. Even when the concept of China yes. at, was very young. And you're getting at this screwed, point. you're getting screwed, Jerry. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. So. so he eventually was able to whittle the plans down some of the most agreed the least egregious measures so it took out the last section about how you have to hire the advisors Mm. i think he got thing the steel company where japan's not going to get control he changed the rules so no island or coastal area can be ceded to any foreign country Mm. including japan so like you know so that's good so he worked in some stuff right however eventually japan was like if you don't accept these demands within 24 hours, we're going to declare war on we're you. We're going to invade you. We're going to invade you. <laughs> yeah. And Renshikai is like, well, okay, I know how that went last time. So yeah. he's like, China's not ready for this war yet. Yeah. He said, China has no choice because of our weakness. But if we work diligently for a decade or two, we might be in a stronger position. Mm. He, signed the, he signed the deal. Which year was this? 1914. 20 or, years later or, or 10 or so years yeah. later, Japan. Invaded anyway. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've um, always just been staring down they just, the from wolf across has been, the ocean. Yeah, wolf has been waiting for its dinner. Yeah. But as part of this, they basically, this is where they first kind of get a lot of Manchuria and other yeah. places. Mm-hmm. So many, including Sun Yat-sen, though, later alleged Ren Shikai accepted the deal in order to get Japanese support for his bid to become emperor. Mm. So they're like, yeah, of course he signed it, right? Mm-hmm. Japan's going to back him to be emperor. I don't think that's Did true. Did Japan back him to be emperor? They actually didn't. <laughs> Okay. So throughout his presidency, as this is going along, mm. despite his ruthless and successful quest to turn every apparatus of his government into a rubber stamping apparatus, he publicly affirmed his support of republicanism. Mm. He's like, I love a republic. Republics are great. They're so modern. Everybody loves republics. As he just <laughs> brutally just crushed everything that could stop Demolished this new republic. Him. Yes. Yeah. However, by the end of 1915, China would have an emperor once again. Oh, my. Yeah. And there's many reasons given for why he thought this was a good idea. By him? Well, or by others. For, for Who not, support him? Yeah, not yeah. But it, why they think he might have thought this was a good idea. Okay. So one is China had only been a republic for like two years. So it's like, and some people missed having an emperor. You know, they liked Ooh. it. Well, you know, they're the head of the church more or less, right? They do all the, the ceremonies, mm. right? You know, there's rituals, there's holidays. People, it was, it's, a, it's a cultural institution, Right. Not just a thing of government. Right. You know, I mean, even like, you know, Japan kept the emperor around. He's like, you know, I kind of like having an emperor. Oh, I, I kind of like, ob- <laughs> <laughs> <I kinda abolish-ness. laughs> like if it was me. Yeah. 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 OK. So, so. So, yeah. Got it. So like just like how you would argue, maybe like today's crowns are to, yeah, to right, stay around. Yeah. Same, same similar reasons. OK. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ren Shikai had successfully crushed his domestic enemies. And so he thought like, OK, I have control of the country now. Now I can become emperor, right? It doesn't really matter if, if I if they voted me as a president. Mm. I'm in charge now. I can be whatever I say I am. Okay. He had defeated military enemies, such as some banded uprisings. Mm-hmm. There was an economic boom for world, during World War I, which also raises popularity. Mm. A geomancer told him it was the only way to escape the famous Ren, Shikai, Ren family curse, mm. where everybody dies before they're 60. Yes. 
Feng Shui masters told him he should oh he should uh, become emperor after viewing his ancestral tomb. Okay. And they're like, you know, you should become emperor. We do know that some around him nakedly supported his bid for emperor. For example, his eldest son, <laughs> Ren Keding, <laughs> went so far as to yeah. produce a fake version of Ren Shikai's favorite newspaper with pro-imperial articles and sneak it in oh my to God. his breakfast. Okay. Uh, that are like... When is Ren Shikai going to become emperor? The people are demanding it, right? Like fake. This article. is what the people want. This is what the people want. So this is his oldest son. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. can you guess any yeah. reason? Can I you, can't think of any reason I why can, he would might want yeah. his father to be the emperor. One interesting thing, though, is yeah. uh, much like Pu Yi, the the young Manchu emperor had to abdicate for Ren Shikai. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Yang Keding uh, sticks around into the 1950s and. Um, it's also like work some crap job for the Communist Party at like a, a like a library or an orchard or something, mm-hmm. you know, some, some some job. Yeah. And uh, he the Japanese wanted to put him in a puppet position like they put in so many people. And he <laughs> and he refused. OK. And he didn't cooperate with them. OK. Which is probably the only reason why he made it through. the He made it. He didn't get killed afterwards. I mean, Puyi was put into a yeah, but, position by the Japanese. I know, but, you know, he's Puyi. <laughs> <laughs> he's the last emperor, Cherry. He's the real last yeah, emperor, not like, the not the son of the fake last emperor. Um, <laughs> so, um, a Columbia pr- law professor, Frank Goodnow, was encouraged to comment on China's system of government by whom? By China, Ren Shikai's <laughs> okay circle. And it, people think now that like he kind of got tricked into this article. Like they're like write a thought experiment, right? He wrote it for Western press. Let me guess. No, he wrote it for China. Oh, but okay. they're like, hey, you know why don't you write a thought experiment? And I'm like, what's the pros and cons for China, right? You know? And so he wrote this article. Okay. You got the article there? You can find it? <laughs> okay. No need to hustle. This is a recording. It's not live. These are some uh, excerpts. China is a country that for centuries has been accustomed to autocratic rule. The great mass of its people are ignorant owing to a lack of schools. The Chinese have never been accorded much participation in the work of government. As a result, the political ability of the Chinese people is not great. The change from autocratic to republican government four years ago was too violent to support any strong hope of immediate success. The present arrangement cannot be regarded as satisfactory. When the president lays down the cares of office, there is great danger that the difficulties that usually accompany the succession in countries like China will arise. The attempt to solve these difficulties may lead to disorders, which, if long continued, may seriously imperil the independence of the country. What, under these conditions, should the attitude of those who have the welfare of China at heart? What should be the attitude of those who have the welfare of China at heart? Should they advocate the continuation of the republic, or should they propose the establishment of a monarchy? So he is writing this kind of as like a thought experiment of sure. Ren Shikai basically took power as president from the barrel of a gun. Mm -hmm. But what happens when Ren Shikai isn't president? Like are people actually going to follow the election? Like what's going to happen? There's no, he made sure people wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. But he's like, but you know, he's saying there's no guarantee Mm. that just because people vote for a new president, that that's what's going to happen. Okay. And the people are too dumb to have a democracy. Apparently. Yes. But I mean, they're saying, I mean, he's saying that, yeah, I mean, it is, obviously you know, China's un- unfair to the Chinese people yeah. but he's you know he's saying like no I mean uh, that's said to not just solely to Chinese to the Chinese people I mean it's the Chinese government countries. says it today yeah right the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the CCP says it where they're like China is not yes. ready for democracy right yes, we're all familiar with yes. the tone and, so that's not a but yeah. but again it's not just the Chinese thing like many no. many bodies of politics in the world are, are, are and countries have been said that in order to delay yes delay democracy things. and deny people the power of the vote yeah, yeah. but it's a so, you know it's an argument of saying like yeah, it's one argument <laughs> that a republic is not necessarily going to be more orderly than an imperial system well i mean but that's his argument right i'm not saying i agree yeah, with it but okay. that's his argument but anyway mm-hmm. this was like this was like the, the <laughs> this was you like, just did a French kiss. Let's yeah, just the, for this the is audience. Like, this is like the secret yeah. sauce. Yes. That that Iran Shikai's Has Imperial ambitions for. is waiting for. Yeah. Because now he's legitimized. So because now he can say, Hey, America, world's old I mean not the world, but you know what I mean. I'm gonna keep calling it the world's oldest. Democracy. This but this <laughs> this this powerful, young, vibrant country. At that, that point it was a rising star. That threw on the off stage. its yeah, yeah, that threw off its colonial masters. <laughs> right, fought a war with England. Yeah. Now they're a power. Yeah, and they're even saying they're saying we're the not Columbia ready. Columbia Law School is yeah. saying China's not ready. Mm-hmm. Right, so 
Uh, he also wouldn't be the first time America says that no. about other countries. Yeah. I mean, he's not America, I guess, but yeah. he's, he's just the law professor. But there's this infamous Society of Planning for Peace and Stability. That's like this pro-monarchist organization that gets created. Yeah. Requests were made for provincial delegates to come to Beijing to discuss China's political system. Goodnow's essay was referenced in these invitations. Of course. So like this Columbia Law Guy, and, and the, interestingly, according to the biography, the actual English text of his essay does not survive because it's like was printed only a couple of times, but the Chinese uh -huh. text does because it was printed so many times that it's yeah. only still exists in Chinese. Wow. So, so you have to read a translation of the translation. Yes, it's didn't translated you? back right, yeah, into, into English. English. Yeah. So the society made an announcement, which is kind of has a few key points. And mm -hmm. this is a society that's basically backed by Ren Shikai. And it says, we were all excited when we made a Republic and it was cool, but was. maybe it's not the best for China. Mm. Not saying we made a mistake, but maybe there's something better, right? Maybe we jumped the gun. Plenty of republics have problems. They have civil wars. They have instability. Mexico got, gets called out because it was kind of having like a civil war at the time. Okay. And he's like, hey, republic might not solve our problems. And then they go like, the U.S. is great, but good no. He's a professor at Columbia. <laughs> And he just said... A law professor. A law prof and he just said, yeah. monarchy's better. Most of the U.S. agrees with him, right? This is how this is what they think in the U.S. Allegedly. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, a <laughs> maybe a republic is good for the U.S., but they're not Chinese, Jerry. Mm. Right? We, we are Chinese. So well, It's still not for the Chinese today. Yeah. Basically, this tone of like, we're just asking questions here, right? <laughs> you know, we're just asking questions. We're just asking questions. We're just... Yeah. Seeing what's the way. And if you get we have mad no at us, agenda. we have no agenda. We're yeah. just asking questions. And if you get mad at us, you don't love China because you don't <laughs> want us to explore all the options. What's best for China? Yes. Which we already know the answer to. Mm -hmm. But yeah. so Liang Qichao, I think that's how you Liang pronounce Qichao, it. Liang Qichao, yeah. Who had been chief justice mm. before Ren Shikai drove him out of the government yeah. and was actually a top degree holder yeah. in the Confucian system. You know mm -hmm. who he is? Yeah, of course I know okay. who he is. So, He's one of the upstanding heroes yeah, that we right? we hear at today. Opposite of what Yuan Shikai's reputation yeah. is and today. He's, <laughs> and he actually yeah. was successful in the organization, but he seems to have adjusted well to modern politics. Yeah, okay. And he's in, I think... Tian I mean, he was a reformer. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's in Tianjin because Ren Shikai doesn't like him and he got kicked out of his position as chief justice when he didn't agree with Ren Shikai. Okay. And he wrote a rebuttal, which supposedly Ren Shikai offered him 200,000 yuan not to publish. <laughs> <laughs> and he sent guys to threaten him. But he ignored them and he published it anyway. Mm -hmm. and like the upstanding citizen, he is. Yes. Yeah. And his argument yeah. is basically like, have you seen China? Have you read a history book? How are <laughs> imperial dynasties like any more stable or free of corruption than a mm. republic. Yeah. Like, have you not lived here? And uh, <laughs> once you swap to an emperor, sure, you can have a constitutional monarchy. But once you swap to an emperor, they can just ignore the constitution. And then you're yeah. just left with an emperor. Mm -hmm. and, and also, like, what if we get a bad emperor? <laughs> Chinese is, emperors has no self-restraint. <laughs> yeah, Let's exactly. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, and this is, these are fairly simple arguments. But, like, you know. Yeah. So Ren Shikai offered large sums of money for people to publish counter rebuttals, but no one qualified took him up on it. Yeah. I mean, they don't want to dirty their name and go down in the history yes. with, yeah. So one thing that thing I said did, one thing this whole Republic thing did do, right? Mm -hmm. Like we said in the last episode is that made all these attempts look very silly and backwards. Yes. So no one modern is seriously who actually understands like, you know, there's like pushing for an empire, yeah. but there are people in mm -hmm. the government. Yeah. His people. His people. <laughs> and his family. Yeah. Who are pushing for... Of course he's family. Yeah, who are pushing for an emperor. And there's also... And this is, you know, I, I think it's unfair to think that... Uh, I think probably a lot of common people probably did want Ren Shikai to become emperor. Because I think if you've raised your whole life that, like, this is what keeps China free of peril, yeah. you might think, I don't know what a president is. I want an emperor. So there are... Sure. There is some support. Well, he had a good reputation yeah. up until this point, right? And yeah. But let's not, I don't, I mean, because well, there's, no, there's well, no polling I'm just, I'm, or anything. No, no, no. But I just want to say, like, yeah. it's it's not like Ren Shikai is the only guy in all of China who wants him to be emperor. Sure, right? sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying well, I know Well, he wouldn't have been able to, he must have had some some support. Well, right. Uh, wait till oh, we wait get for there, it? Okay. Right? Okay, so. Okay, okay. Uh, Pro-monarchy demonstrations were held often around the presidential palace. Mm -hmm. Right? And also, let's just not 
pretend that he's not monarchy. He's not reinstating the old monarchy. No. He's not. He's, the reinst- old, he's just making himself into yeah. a royal. He, he wants to instate him. He has no God given like rights or anything like that. He's not chosen by God. No. But I guess once he's an emperor, he could say that he's chosen yeah, by God. Because otherwise, how did he become emperor? I, I know. That's but the mandate of heaven for but you. But he's not following any traditions here. He's no, not trying no. to get Pui back and. You no, know. no, 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 no. He wants to instate himself. Yeah. So Ren Shikai began. This is like 1915, mid 1915. Mm. Ren Shikai began perform, uh, or, you know, this is leading up to it he began performing imperial traditions Mm -hmm. venerating confucius in the temple of heaven sometimes he would do these official holidays okay um because there's certain rites that the emperor is supposed to do at certain times of the year and he started doing them (laughs) and he'd wear the robes and everything okay we have some pictures yeah there's pictures of robes yeah he began giving out noble ranks and honors to people he's like you're a prince (laughs) <laughs> you're this, you're that, right? You're yeah. a noble of the, the fifth rank or whatever. Giving out favors, essentially. Yes. And Feng Guozhong. Feng Guo. Oh, Feng Guozhong. Okay. Yeah, Feng Guozhong. Yeah, Feng Guozhong. So um, he would later become vice president and president. Mm-hmm. And he visited Ren Shikai. And he's like, what, like, what's going on? Like, why are you doing the robes? <laughs> why? <laughs> That's <laughs> kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. Why are you giving, like, why are you making people princes? Yeah. <laughs> and Ren Shikai's like, look, hey, Manchu people have given got noble titles for centuries. Okay. So why can't Han Chinese people be them? Why can't Han Chinese people be them? Okay, prince? don't make this about national pride. Yeah. <laughs> so like... he's like, hey, you know, and he's like, it's not hurting anyone. Mm-hmm. The constitution doesn't say I can't do it. I don't have any plans to survive the empire. Ruling China is rough. I couldn't make my children do that. You know, you know, it'd be too harsh for them. It seems like the very intention is no, to... No, <laughs> Jerry, he's, uh, he's, he's thinking about them. The president's yeah. children aren't going to be presidents no. Guar- not, not guaranteed <laughs> yeah sometimes it happens but uh yeah and so he's like yeah. you know hey it's just a bit of fun more or less just play yeah and Feng Guozhong's like okay <laughs> <laughs> and so he kind of wasn't easy but he's like well hey I trust Ren Shikai I've known him a long time sure um so uh but then eventually Ren Shikai decided he would put the question to a vote a vote which was very clearly and obviously rigged. Representatives from across China were screened for their views mm-hmm. and given $500 in travel expenses. That's like $15,000 today. You don't need that much to travel. No. And uh, this political... So it was a bribe. It was a bribe. Yeah. This political part... And they only would send you if you agreed that Renshika should be emperor. Okay. So this political participation council mm-hmm. voted uh, 1,993 to zero that Renshika should be emperor. Oh. Renshika declined though. He's like, oh. he's like, I, I voted to support the Republic, right? I made an oath mm. to China and to the Republic. So, sorry, guys, I can't be emperor. Mm. And then the council argued, you don't have to defend the Republic if we're not a Republic, right? Cherry, that's some galaxy. So what, they're just going to decide they're not a Republic? And he's like, no, he's like, he's, he's, they're like, if you, they're like, you were going to be the president of the Republic. Yeah. But if you turn China into an emp- into a empire, then, hey, you can be the emperor, right? There's no republic There's no to republic defend. anymore to defend. And he's like, if the people demand it, if they want the an emperor, your picked. job is to support the people. Yeah. We all voted unanimously, Cherry. It's fair. Mm. We want an emperor. Okay. And uh, Ren Shikai, he reluctantly agreed. Reluctantly. He's like, mandate of heaven. What you going to do? I, well, they really put on a good show. I've been chosen. Cherry. Yeah. On December 31st, 1915, he proclaimed the Hongxin monarchy. Hmm. which is Grand Constitution, okay. is the name of his imperial line. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ren Shikai made a few changes, though. This would be a modern, forward-thinking monarchy. Oh. Yeah. Eunuchs were abolished. No more eunuchs. Okay. Those are famously in the imperial palace. No man could stay after midnight to with the emperor and all preserve his concubines. Preserve the lines of the... To preserve the line of the emperor. The pure like, blood. So no one's sneaking in and having sex with the concubine. Yeah. I'm sure that's a, the story of a bunch of Chinese romances, I'm sure. Um, it is. Yeah. yeah. And the, but Usually unic- it's the doctors for the... Oh, okay. Because <laughs> they're not eunuchs. Yeah. 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 So, and then um, the eunuchs, you know, have been castrated. Yeah. Lots of pure So drama. he's like, that's unfair. No yeah. more eunuchs. Instead, okay. we'll just have women. More oh. women. Mm. We'll have the concubines and the concubine My servants. My concubines and... Yeah. Will also be women. So more women for him. Uh, more women for him. Yeah. And he other did other things. Like, for example, he had an armored car instead of a carriage. You know, he's modern emperor, sure. Right? Okay. Um, but he still wore all the crap. <laughs> Since he had already seized complete control of China, mm-hmm. realistically, 
he, this really doesn't change much from a pure power perspective. Okay. However, sometimes the name changes everything. Okay? Yeah. Up until this point, Renchikai had been fairly popular. China was making a lot of money selling stuff to the Allies in World War One. Yeah. He kind of had threaded the needle with, mm. the, with the 21 points. He had fought bandits. He was doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So people were like, you know, more or less okay with Renchikai. He gave out hundreds of honorary titles and ranks to people. Mm. You get to be a prince. You get to be a marquee. You get to be a this. You get to be a that. Yeah. Uh, however, instantly, anti-Renshikai movements began to sweep the country. Yeah. Uh, among the strongest were those of the Bayan clique, the coalition of military men administrators that had supported him the entire time. Maybe they didn't want him to be the emperor. And also, he had lied to them. Because, like, Feng Wuzhong, he, Feng they, Wuzhong. Yeah, yeah. he had lied to them. He's like, no, I'm not going to be emperor. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, months later, he's like, hey, guys, I'm emperor. Yeah. And so they all felt like they'd been betrayed the, yeah like that you know they weren't trusted so for example this one guy was a member of the clique ren tried to make him a prince and he's like i would rather kill myself <laughs> and he's like if you make me a prince i'm I'll i'm gonna kill, kill i'm gonna kill myself i'm not gonna go out of history as like you know the last han chinese prince yeah so it seems that ren Chika had badly misjudged the situation mm. sun yat-sen predictably called for a new revolution he said the future of our motherland has suddenly become more darkened the republic built by our martyrs has unexpectedly, I don't know about unexpectedly, <laughs> turned out to be the private possession of the Ren family. 400 yeah. million compatriots weep profusely. Mm. Uh, Ren's declaration gave him new funding, new recruits, and vindication. Of like, wow. I was right the whole time. Mm -hmm. so this is like the third revolution of Ren Sun Yat-sen's over this. They're all like, oh, only if we have listened only to you. Only if we listen to Sun yat -sen. Uh, all over China, rebellions started. Okay. Some of them opportunistically, right? Yeah, but as, a lot of as them, always, yeah. as always. Uh, and the new intellectuals of China turned on him instantly, mm. even prior supporters. So Li Dazhao was one of them. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to read you. I'm going to read you. So he said uh, he was originally a Ren Shikai supporter mm. until Ren <laughs> declared himself emperor. He said, all those who dared to rekindle the tyrannical cinders or reignite the monarchical flames, whether the followers of the Prepare for Peace Society or the adherents of, that was that organization I talked about before, or the adherents of dynastic restoration should be regarded as traitors of the state and public enemies of citizens. Their organization should be exterminated, their books burned, their backers eradicated, <laughs> and their roots removed. Their sprouts should be destroyed so that they could not grow and proliferate. Then there will be hope of great prospect for our country. Sharp. So, yeah. So this is basically more, I mean, this is more brutal, but this is like what Sun Yat-sen was. He's like, we can't have the government in Beijing. Yeah. It's got to be in Nanjing. We got to start over. Yeah. Because otherwise this is going to happen. Yeah. Foreign countries also rejected his claim, with Japan going so far as to arm rebel groups, which might also have just been opportunistic on Japan's part. Let's cause more trouble for China. Mm -hmm. We can take more stuff. Um, his attempt to stamp out dissent militarily, Ren Shikai's, was, was basically unsuccessful. Many of his generals and troops were unenthusiastic about fighting for an emperor. Yeah. His own generals begged him to abandon the throne. Oh, no. Um, and after 83 days, he did. He's like, all right, guys. <laughs> my, it was just an experiment. My bad. Yeah. You know, I'll go back to being president. Let's forget about yeah, this. He's like, oopsies. <laughs> 83 you know? days. That's short. Yeah. I right? mean, there's been some it's also very ones. long for a republic to be. Yeah. Yeah. Having an emperor. Yeah. People weren't happy. People weren't satisfied with this. Mm -hmm. They're like, no, nah, a guy. It's, gotta, gotta, it's over. You got to go. Yeah. And most calls for his resignation. As president. As president. Yeah. Multiple provinces declared independence, saying they would rejoin the republic when Renshikai was gone. Mm. So they're like, we're done. We'll come back later. <laughs> um, Huang Xing, who was basically the second, second man to Sun Yat-sen, yeah. um, publicly said to Ren, isn't it senselessly stupid if a person stands against the whole nation? You telegraphed, right? You got to tell him that. It's hard, it's hard to argue with that. Yes. So he, you know, basically, Ren Shikai eventually got down to telling commanders to just annihilate the rebels and kill them and stuff. But, mm -hmm. you know, it was over. He died on June 6, 1916. Okay. And, and how like, old was he? Uh, I, it's like, I think he's like his late 50s. I forget how. Did he break the curse? No, he did not. He mm. did not break the curse. He did not make it to 60. Despite everything, he was buried with honor and ceremony, a large marble tomb based off of the sarcophagus of U.S. President Grant was <laughs> okay. made for him as well as a museum. 
And there was okay. a big ceremony, all this stuff. I think they were kind of trying to keep up this idea of like a transition of power. Mm. So even though he did this stuff, they're kind of ignoring it and, and acting like everything's normal. Right. So um, after 1950, when Mao Zedong, communists had taken power, many wanted to demolish the structure. Yeah. Uh, Mao visited it in 1952 and ordered it to, ordered it be kept intact oh. and preserved. Why? He said, do not demolish it. Rather, maintain it well. It is a useful negative sample to educate <laughs> for future generations. And it still stands to this day. Mm, okay. So what do you think, Cherry? You wow, think, wow, wow. Do you think Ren Shikai was just misunderstood? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously he is more, it's more complicated yeah. than a one-dimensional character, right? He had a long career mm -hmm. being a diplomat of China, being a bureaucrat, or mm -hmm. being an a administrator, I guess, mm -hmm. of China, right? And a Chinese society. Um, but, uh, but I don't know. He just, he wanted to be an emperor. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dark spot. It's hard to wash away. Yeah. You know? And, you know, you can't blame it all on Ren Shikai, right? I mean, it could have been, even if Sun Yat-sen had been the president and Ren Shikai had backed him, China still could have fallen apart, right? But, but. Well, Ren I guess that's an alternative history. Yeah, alternative history. Uh, period drama but, uh, but, idea. But, but Ren Shikai basically made it inevitable that China was going to fall apart with, with this level of. Yeah. Well. I will say after 83 days, he did give up. Yeah. He didn't just sit there and say, do it over my dead body. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, so that's something um, could have gotten worse. But I, I think I do think uh, like no question, the foundation of the new republic or the dream of a new republic has been shaken. Has been poisoned. Like, greatly. Essentially. Yeah. Um, by this act. Right. So, I, it, you know, sometimes people yeah. just love power too much yeah, i don't know Chair. what could have been right mm -hmm. my my uh I think and he has done a lot of things for china yeah wrench guy has done a lot of things yeah i mean and he, i mean and if he had died if he had like become the provisional president mm -hmm. and then six months later he got like run over by a carriage and died okay you know i think people would look at him and let's, say, let's say china still fell apart right they'd be like man well they couldn't blame it on him yeah, we, we couldn't we couldn't yeah <laughs> like, history could not they'd be like if only yeah. ren shikai had survived right yeah. he could have been the president but i think instead the kind of standard oh if only it could have been is like oh what if ren shikai had just let sonia sen be president yeah no i, I actually i don't think because the that's the theory of sort of like the 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 hero theory right like mm. i think there's a name for it cut cut this part where i don't know the name you don't know but you told me about it What's the hero theory? Like there are certain people in history that oh have, the great man theory no, of history. yeah the, the great man the great person history I refuse yeah. to say the great man well, history I, I mean it it kind of ended in the 1950s so I mean it it is called the great man theory because well I'm gonna call it the great person history well, feminists <laughs> don't believe in the theory so they would I don't whatever yes but no but that would no I I I think that theory is harmful right because you go you you ignore the details and the yeah. complexity and the nuance of history. And you, uh, you, you just go only if one person at this point has done one thing, yeah. history would have been changed. But that ignores the sort of effort that needs to be put into any sort of social change, any sort of revolution, any sort of progress. And it also ignores... Because it's hard work by a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, I guess in a democracy or not in a democracy. Maybe. The modern form is kind of like you people call, talk about like trends and forces rather yeah. than mm -hmm. great man. And I think that, yeah, I mean, like realistically, like the 21 points... It doesn't matter who's in charge of China, Japan's 21 demands. Yeah, they're going to raise it. They're going to get those demands on their desk. Yeah. And it's like, even if your your favorite character from the roster of Chinese politicians, whether it's Sun Yat-sen, whether it's Huang Xing, whether it's Li Qichao, what's his Liang name? Liang Qichao. Liang Qichao. No, I'm saying it wrong. But um, It's okay. I think you said, you said it right. Right. But it, your favorite character, right, The they're going to butt up against the simple reality that japan's gonna invade right if they don't if you don't sign the things right and they're some, a product of their times yeah and so some of these things get blamed on like ren shikai or other things I and mean, obviously you, you you can't blame anyone but him for the fact that he became emperor yeah well he made it convenient yeah. by or doing that especially that he might have assassinated song Jiaren and, I, and I think he did yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and well he the person yeah. who most benefited from the yes. fact that 
yeah. Song Jia Ren was but, assassinated. But yeah. like you know, there's certain things that would ha- that are going to happen. Yeah, either then way. And on that that like he is one person mm-hmm. can't change. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um. So anyway, but ever but anyway, so Ren Shikai, last hundred years, ever since his ever since he really became emperor, yeah, has become the kind of the poisoner of the well. Yeah. The arch enemy of. China, I mean, he becomes the face of the old rule of the of old, the old rule, guard of the of how they seize onto power yeah. and they and they try and claw China back. And mm-hmm. I think, and not I think, but in the last thirty years of our time, yeah, oh, okay. things of people have scholars have developed a, a like a rounder appreciation of him as not just like he's a terrible evil yeah. man who yeah. destroyed China. They're like, okay. You know, he declared himself emperor. You can't get away from that. Yeah. But, you know, he's not... Uh, but there's more detail to his life we can learn from. Yeah, he's not like this murderous tyrant, mm-hmm. right? He's, yeah. you know, I don't know. I'm a Renshikai apologist after reading... Uh, <laughs> after reading... Uh, there's two... I'm, I'm going to do a post about it on, on Twitter. But there's two... I'll, I will say there's there's only two biographies of Renshikai in English. And there's some other... You know documents that I read that and talk about. But him. two major ones. Yeah. But there's two. But there's only two actual biographies, and mm-hmm. one is from the uh, 1950s, the late 1950s. Um, it was just called Ren Shikai, and it is by Jerome Chen. And, and it's sort of a textbook version of it, isn't it? Yeah, I would say if you're only gonna read one, don't read this one. Because it is an it is a slightly older view of him, right? And it's also a bit more dry because it goes into a lot more details. Mm. Um, but it is good because it has lots of primary sources. It has lots of like his speeches and quotes and stuff printed in full, which is good. Uh, and there's also Ren Shikai, a reappraisal by <laughs> Patrick Fuliang Shan, and uh, that was really I think it was only printed in the last couple of years. Like I think twenty nineteen or twenty eighteen, and it is um, the, into the microphone. I'm in the microphone, and it it is um, a Chinese uh, uh, a professor of Chinese history took all of those these Chinese sources from all these archives that people have been writing biographies of him in the past fifty years, and he compiled it into a book. Mm. And it's more interesting, but it does spend a lot of time trying to um, disprove myths about Ren Shikai. Mm. Which, if you don't know anything about Ren Shikai, you know, if it's like, actually, Ren Shikai did not visit brothels when he was 12. You're like, well, I, I didn't have a strong opinion on that. <laughs> Either way, right? Like, yeah, I'm, but sure. it's built on the background that people, lots of people did have. Yeah, like this, he's Hitler, or, or basically. The common belief. Yes. Yeah. That he's like, that he's like this Hitler character. And that this reappraisal people is People kind of, say that too easily. Few well, people are Hitlers and Well, Ren Shikai is certainly not Hitler. I know, yeah, but so, I just, yeah. yeah. So anyway, but those are the two books. I'll link them if you're interested in Ren Shikai. I highly recommend reading them because he's a very, very interesting person. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll well, put anyway. the links in the show notes. Yeah. So anyway, uh, thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed this and uh, have a nice day. If you did enjoy this, uh, leave us a comment. Or a review on Apple Podcast. No. Um, subscribe to us on Spotify. No. Re- recommend us to your friends. Uh-uh. Don't listen to Natalie. No, no. Just do whatever you want. You know, just you know, listen to us if you like listening to us. No well, pressure. <laughs> well, we can't. We can't actually pressure anyone no into pressure, doing no it. Pr- you're pressuring them right we now. We have no power. You're pressuring them. Okay. You're like Well, guy. hopefully that you volunteer. You're trying to declare yourself emperor of this podcast. <laughs> of this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a democracy. Yeah. This podcast is a is an imperial dynasty. Yeah. Yeah. It okay. is interesting though that um uh-huh. I mean, not really as an actual political party in China, but like as as the uh, strongest warlord that the KMT came out on top eventually. Yeah. Over Ren Shikai, even though he tried, he tried, he, he, he outlawed them, right? They did, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, well, talk, see you next time. See you next time.